Girl, can we talk about loving ourselves for a damn minute? Because can I be honest with you? Sometimes I forget, I forget myself that I deserve to show myself the same amount of love that I show to my kids, to my husband, to my family, to my friends. As moms, as givers, as nurturers, we are literally hardwired to pour into the cups of others, to recharge others before we even stop to think about ourselves. And usually we are taking care of others when our own batteries are drained, when our own cups are completely empty, that's when we are, are pretty much spreading ourselves thin and taking care of everybody else. But I am here to tell you, I speak from experience when I say that you absolutely cannot fill up everybody else when you are running on coffee fumes alone, my friend. You've got to metaphorically, and if you're like me, very literally, take the time to grind the beans to that coffee to brew the coffee, slowly and intentionally brew the coffee in the morning, take the time to smell the aroma of the coffee, and then more importantly, sit down and sip that coffee while it's nice and hot. Enjoy the hug to your soul. Because let's face it, that is what coffee does, my friends, it hugs your soul. And I know at this point you're like, what is she talking about? But that coffee analogy is very much like practicing self-love. Implementing a regular self-love routine into your life is giving your soul a hug. And the practice of self-love is not just something that I am here to preach at tired, busy, spread too thin moms. I mean, I'm definitely here to talk to you because I'm one of those people. But this self-love is for everybody. Practicing self-love is for everyone. So the reason I compared self-love to making coffee is because that's one of the ways that I show love to myself, as silly as it might sound. As a busy mom of three, working full time from home, as a homeschooling mom, as a devoted wife, as a dog mommy, I've got three dogs as well, as a woman who stays home full time taking care of her home, and tending to all of the millions of things in between all of that, including all of the plants that I decided to adopt during quarantine. It's super easy to pour myself a cup of coffee in the morning and then get busy doing all the other things, taking care of all the other things, and I forget about that hot cup of coffee that I've poured myself and it gets sad and cold on the counter as I neglect it and do all the other things without taking care of one of the things that makes me happy in the morning right? That hot cup of coffee that I would really like to be sipping. It wasn't until I was overly tired, overly worked, spread way too thin that I started trying to figure out what can I do to fill up my own cup? I know it sounds so silly, but that hot cup of coffee in the morning is one of the things that brings me great joy. So how do I, how do I fix that? How do I make it happen? I first of all need to stop blaming external circumstances. I had to step back and stop looking at my kids as a distraction from sitting down and having a hot cup of coffee or the dogs needing to be let out or the house needing to be picked up or homeschool needing to be prepared. Those are all external distractions that are just part of daily life. But I had to stop and take a look inward and figure out how can I make this work for myself? How can I prioritize it without letting everything else fall to the side just so I can have a hot cup of coffee in the morning? The solution was to get my booty out of bed a little bit earlier, get the coffee going while I make breakfast for the kids. That way when the kids come down from bed, they can sit down at the table, get right into their breakfast, and guess what? That has just freed up time for me to sit down and enjoy my hug in a mug. It sounds super simple, but it brings me so much joy. And when I take that cold sip of coffee from the mug that's been sitting on the counter for hours because I've been so busy doing other things. It's just a reminder that I'm neglecting myself a little bit and neglecting the simple things that make me happy. So by doing a little rearranging of my morning and taking control of what I'm able to take control of, my cup is figuratively and literally full of hot, happy liquid. But I know coffee is not a one size fits all, so maybe coffee is not your thing. But if not, how are you existing right now? Seriously, tell me. Maybe you are somebody who has a problem saying no to things because you don't wanna disappoint others. So if that sounds like you, if you are that person that I just described, perhaps your way of practicing self-love needs to be saying no. Saying no can become a really powerful expression of self-love. Physical, 
movement, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what your circumstances are, are also a super, super powerful form of self-love. And it will always be something that you can benefit from physically, mentally, emotionally. It reduces stress, it improves your self-esteem, it does all of the good things that we deserve and need as human beings. Showing love to yourself does not have to be some big, over-the-top, expensive gesture like an entire spa day or getting a full body makeover, um, no. Self-love can be small acts of kindness that you show to yourself every single day, just like you would for the people in your life that you love. It's a seed that has to be planted in your heart and in your mind. Let the roots of practicing self-love dig really deep into your soul, reminding you that you are not only in need of it, but that you deserve it. Now, go do something good for yourself, my friend.